So most of us are probably familiar with these automatic uh, hand sanitizer or soap dispensers. You know, you just stick your hand under it, automatically squirts out some soap or some san hand sanitizer. It's nice because you don't have to touch anything. You don't have to pump it or anything like that. Fairly ubiquitous, especially these days. But did you know that the manufacturer of this particular dispenser, which is Gojo, limits what you can put in a dispenser? For example, this dispenser is only supposed to dispense hand sanitizer. And the way they do that is these cartridges or bottles or whatever you want to call them, this little nub right here is a RFID tag. And this one is labeled GRY. And the dispenser is labeled LBL. This dispenser is only supposed to dispense LBL cartridges. My friend bought a bunch of these and asked and realized that this was a problem and asked me if I could come up with a way to work around it. Now, some people take the RFID tag off a uh, proper bottle and then stick it in the RFID reader and hot glue it or whatever, and you've basically now created a dispenser that'll just dispense whatever bottle you put in there as long as it physically fits. But I don't have any of the LBL tags. Fortunately, someone on the internet already found a way to hack these soap dispensers, which is kind of silly that you have to do because there's no good reason why this should be necessary. But this uh, dispenser, these dispensers, these Gojo dispensers, use an Arduino compatible ATtiny48 uh, uh, microcontroller. And they're even nice enough to give you programming headers right on the board. And it's trivial to reprogram it. And the gentleman who already reverse engineered all of this has a nice sketch that enables you to not only dispense whatever cartridge you want to put in there, but it'll even work without even a cartridge in there now. So anyway, so I'm going to go through how I uh, uploaded the program and that. Hopefully you find this interesting. Um, if anything, this is just a message to manufacturers to stop doing crap like this. It's ridiculous. There's no reason why you shouldn't just be able to put this soap in this dispenser without having to hack it, except for the fact that you want to sell more 60 or $70 dispensers. Anyway, it's ridiculous. So I'm going to go through and show you how uh, I uh, hacked this one. And I've got four more to do. And yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to Zappa, who is the owner of the GitHub repository that I found when I uh, started doing some digging after realizing that these dispensers use the ATtiny48 uh, 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 microcontroller. Uh, Zappa's got a nice uh, GitHub repository here with uh, all kinds of information on these dispensers and how to hook up your programmer to it and um, even has a sample sketch that gives you basic function functionality uh, of the dispenser and does not include um, the RFID reader. So it enables you to uh, use any uh, soap or cartridge or bottle that you want. So just wanted to give a shout out to them. I'll talk about uh, the programming of the chip more here in a second, but first let's talk about actually um, uh, hooking up the or dismantling the soap dispenser and then hooking up your programmer to it and actually uh, getting it uh, programmed. So uh, it'll probably vary depending on the dispenser, but this one just has a little tab. It's fairly easy to open. And then you have these tabs here that you uh, push down and then this whole thing slides down, slides down and then basically it just pops out. And this is basically the, the electromechanical part of the dispenser. This is just the shell that holds everything. So you can set that aside. And then um, there's probably a couple of different ways you can do this. The header for programming it is right there. Um, if you have um, hookup wires that have little hooks on it, like these guys, you could probably go in there and just hook those on um, and uh, program it and hook and then hook the other end to your to your programmer program it that way I don't have enough of these to do that so I've got to use these guys so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dismantle this it's fairly simple fairly straightforward 
solder on a header um, onto the board, and then that'll give me access to be able to plug in uh, the wires and then hook up the programmer for programming. And then the header is there if I ever wanna reprogram these uh, to make any modifications or anything like that. There's the label uh, noting that this is an LBL. And here is, that's the uh, RFID tag right there, noting that this is a GRY uh, bottle. And so these two won't, as of right now, don't work together because Gojo is run by a bunch of jerks. So uh, let me dismantle this. Basically, uh, what you need to do is pop out the one screw right here and then we'll have to desolder these two wires right there and then this whole thing oh you've got to take this off as well just by squeezing those two points there and then it just slides out and then this whole thing will slide out and we will have access to the board it's not too complicated and it almost seems like like what's the point just by the by right bottle but first off for me personally it's the principle of the matter and then second of off you actually those the bottles for this dispenser are not apparently are hard to come by as of right now so it's just as simple as that those two wires and then there is a clip right in there hard to see because it's all black plastic, but if you just work at it, you'll eventually get this out. It's not too terribly difficult. As he says, I'm having a difficult time getting out. It's just a matter of getting the right turn angle. There we go. I think we got it. Yeah. Okay. So, that's just the body of it. We can set that aside for now. So this is the uh, uh, board and everything else. You can see there's the, uh, the RFID reader. You could potentially um, read uh, this tag if you have, have RFID, uh, an RFID reader and writer. Read this tag, make your own tag up, and then stick in there, glue it in there permanently. Um, or what have you. Um, I don't have any, uh, I don't have an RFID uh, reader or writer, um, so we're gonna go the reprogramming route. All I need to do is pop this board out. There's these tabs right there. Oh, you know what? I forgot, there's a screw. So let me grab some headers and I will solder some headers on and we will get to programming it. So you actually only need six of these pins to be able to program it, but I'm gonna solder in a whole uh, header here, just because. Now, on the first one I did of these, I actually put the header on uh, that way on the board. It actually made it a little more difficult to get access. If you uh, look at Zappa's pictures better than I did, you'll see that he actually soldered his header on in that direction. And he also used a right angle header. I don't have any of those, so I'll just bend these pins once I get it soldered in. But having it soldered there gives you a little more uh, clearance, a little bit easier access. So you just put, this, put the header on there and solder away. All right, and then once the header is on there, like I said, uh, if you have right angle headers, you can use those. Those make it easier or just a little bit quicker. But I don't have any on hand, so I'm just going to bend these guys up. There's plenty of length there to attach the hookup wires for... Um, programming the chip. And again, you don't need all of them. You only need the first two and the last four, but 
might as well put them all on there. I'll actually reassemble this and um, come back and we can uh, hook it up to the programmer and I'll talk about uh, hooking it up to the programmer and uh, the sketch and everything else. All right, so I've got the um, dispenser hooked up to the programmer um, and on the Zappa repository, he details which pins are which. You've got uh, VCC, ground, uh, MOSI, MISO, SCK, and uh, reset. And they're just hooked up to the respective pins on the programmer. That is one thing that is different from uh, programming a regular Arduino or normal Arduino is that you will have to use an external programmer, but it's fairly uh, straightforward and easy. I'm using the SparkFun AVR Pocket Programmer. Um, this is a great little thing. I originally got this so I could program ATtiny85 uh, chips, which are uh, themselves an excellent uh, little microcontroller for smaller projects. And I've got the programmer set to power the chip. I don't have any batteries in the dispenser at the moment. So let's hop, hop over to the Arduino IDE and get this programmed with the new program. All right, so here we are back over at the Zappa GitHub repository. And I just wanted to show you, he does have a picture with the uh, pin labels on them so you know which ones need to be hooked up to the programmer. So before we can program in the uh, Arduino IDE, we do need to install the ATtiny48 core. Zappa provides a link to that in his uh, repository. So if we go over to the ATtiny48 uh, or ATtiny core uh, repository, uh, there's a lot of information here you may want to read through if you're using a different programmer because you may need some external components, capacitors, things like that. Uh, the AVR Pocket Programmer I'm using worked uh, right out of the box, so I didn't need anything. But we still do need to install the core in the Arduino IDE, so we click on the installation. And we just grab this board manager URL from here, and we just copy it. And we open the Arduino IDE, go to File, and then Preferences. And then the additional board manager URLs, we open that window, and you just paste that URL right into that window. Click on OK and OK. And then come up to Tools and then Board and then Board Manager. And it's going to update all of the boards. And then once that's done, we come up to the search here and type AT Tiny. And then you just want to select the AT Tiny Core by Spence. Select the latest version and click on Install and then you can just close out of that. And then once that's done, you can come over to Tools, select Board, and you should be able to find in your board uh, manager here the ATtiny4888 option. If you don't see it after doing all those steps, go ahead and close your Arduino IDE and reopen it, and then you should see those options. So in the sketch that Zappa provides in his uh, repository, he does have some configuration uh, options that you want to set under the Tools menu for the ATtiny48. Uh, and then what you want to do is make sure that your programmer is selected. In my case, I had to use the ASP, the USB Tiny ISP, the ATtiny Core one. Normally, uh, when I've programmed um, ATtiny85s and things like that, I could use the AS USB Tiny ISP. But I could only get it to work uh, if I use the ATtiny Core option. So if it's not working and you're using the same programmer, you only want to try switching that option. But once you have that set and your programmer is hooked up and ready to go, as a matter of course, uh, I would uh, select the burn bootloader option. It just takes two seconds, burns the bootloader. And then once you have the sketch in there and you have the settings set under the tools menu for the chip, uh, and you've maybe made any changes you wanted to make to the program, the only thing left to do is, unlike a normal sketch where you'd select the upload option, because we're using an external programmer, we come up to sketch. You select the Upload Using Programmer option. It doesn't take any time at all. And it's uploaded the sketch. All right, so now that we've uploaded the um, sketch, what we can do is we can actually just um, disconnect the programmer. And I'll go ahead and seat that in fully so it doesn't pop out. There we go. And put the screw back in
All right, so now we've got it back together. We're gonna put the batteries back in it. And now one thing that tripped me up was this should, based on the, uh, the program uh, that Zappa provides, uh, this should just work without anything in it, but you can see that it's not. And this tripped me up for a minute, uh, an embarrassingly long several minutes. In fact, I flipped it upside down and set it down and I was getting ready to uh, pull this all out again. Because I thought, oh, this is a slightly different model. Maybe the pinout is different. And so I've got to adjust some of the programming because the motor's on a different pin or something. And then I realized, stuck my hand in front of it as it was sitting like that. And it was working. And the reason is, is because uh, this is the uh, door uh, detect button. So when the dispenser uh, door is open, uh, the dispenser won't work. If you hold that button down, then it works uh, just fine. And this little guy popped out of the little track, set that back in there. So yeah, and then it's just a matter of sticking it back in the housing. And there you go, fully functioning, non-crippled dispenser that you could put any soap or hand sanitizer in no matter what Gojo says you're allowed to put in, as it should be. All right, so that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I hope it at least serves as a message to manufacturers to not do this crap. I mean, I appreciate that Gojo made it easy to hack this particular dispenser. Um, and thank you to uh, Zappa, the uh, person who made that GitHub repository with all the information necessary uh, to hack this dispenser. But uh, to manufacturers, stop doing this sort of stuff. It's stupid. There's no reason for it. It's not a safety issue. It's not a quality control issue. It's just you being a jerk. An RFID tag on soap is ridiculous. I get it. You want to sell more dispensers because you want to have, you want a customer to have to buy a dispenser for their hand sanitizer and a dispenser for their soap. It's as ridiculous as putting an, putting RFID tags in, in coffee pods. And anyway, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.